Nope. Any questions for Coach Blair when you guys are ready? Coach, uh, come out in the first half and uh, you guys missed a few kind of easy shots early on in the paint, probably five or six actually in the first three minutes or yeah, so. Three offensive boards in the first two possessions, I think. And no points. Um, what did you talk to them about early in the first half as East Bay took a six or eight point lead early on? Well, we didn't, you know, we, we actually sat in the locker room prior to going out there. The guys were out warming up and Coach Morozik and I were talking, I got 30 years of coaching and he's got 15 or so. We're like, well, you know what's gonna happen. First game of the year at home, be tight. You know, it's very hard to play a loose game when you're playing in that environment that's supposed to win and it's the first game. You're already tight because it's the first game. And then you're playing against a Division II school that everybody says you're supposed to win. I kept on trying to tell them there's you no know, automatic St. John's lost last year their opener to a Division II team. It's uh, They have four Division I transfers. They're a coach that's been a head coach for 10 years. They're well coached. They're organized. They're confident. They're excited. And it's a 40-minute game. You're not going to win it in the first four minutes. You're not going to win it in last. You have to win over 40 minutes and, and see if you have a, a 6, 8, 10, 12, 15-point victory. And then, you know, are we, are we excited about the victory? I'm, I'm excited that we made some really good offensive adjustments in the second half. I was disappointed that one of the areas that we have spent most uh, concern about this year was uh, defending the three-point line. And I thought there was two or three times that with great defense, they made some great shots. But I thought there was six or seven times where we either lost a guy, got hit on a screen, didn't communicate it, we, we, we overhelped down. Um, and, and, and especially when somebody that we had scouted already that was a good shooter, but then gets going and be, you become a great shooter. You make a couple, you become a great shooter in confidence. And then they, there they were seven of 10 from the three point line in the first half, which is kind of what my whole point was this year. We've got to be tremendously improved from last year's perimeter defense. Yeah, it seems like in games like these, uh, some of these Division II teams, San, Ber San Bernardino comes to mind, has one or two just like uh, lights out guys who, you know, um, who probably you scouted, like you said, who, who you know are going to come in and, and give you everything they've got. They, they had number two tonight that who really uh, really came out and made yeah. some shots. Um, you know, it reminded me a lot when we played down at UCLA and up to UCLA, both Dylan Royer and, and Kyle Odister. You know, I call it the gunslinger mentality. When you got nothing to lose, it's, you know, and you're, you're kind of playing the underdog role, a lot of confidence, a lot of enthusiasm, let it fly, you know, not playing tight. Um, and, and I think they did a great job. They just really did a great job tonight. And I'm just happy that we found an, enough adjustments, enough plays, and I'm glad you had Marcellus come up and, and uh, chance to meet with him because he really was a tremendous spark off the bench. I've never seen Victor Joseph struggle as much from the field. I think that first layup or two he had it didn't go in, and then he pressed it a little bit. And he was, He's trying to find out the balance between – we have more options out there now, Josh Martin, more scoring options. So Vic is kind of trying to find out that balance right now, when to shoot. They passed up some good ones and then forced a couple there, and it was getting tight. So um, that's, that's our key to our, our offensive side this year is just trying to find out how – but I, I, we got to the free throw line more. That was a big part. Uh, the, the, the big part offensively we're trying to do is, is, is be more aggressive and getting to the line some interior plays and in drives. With Vic and Don and Josh and Marcellus now out, kind of maybe on the on the floor at the same time. Um, obviously, that's a great thing to have lots of options. But um, potentially, if if one guy's not kind of taking that open shot when he has it, it could also be paralyzing, right? Like yeah, it was, it's great. I had an article we, we read and shared with the team. Uh, it's called the charcuterie uh, of uh, it was about the Warriors. The ESPN magazine had a great story about. When the Warriors, um, Kerr came in and they're trying to have five, four, five great scores on the court, and, and it was hard for them. It took a, a good month for them to learn when to shoot, not to overpass, when to take it. Um, and I think, our, you know, I don't think we have, we're not, not comparing us to the Golden State Warriors and comparing the, the fine line there is in, in uh, playing of shooting and sharing. You know, you got to shoot it, you got to share it, you got to attack it, and it's a fine line of developing that chemistry each year with new guys. What's the thing you think biggest kind of thing you need to work on and talk to him about before next weekend? Huh, execution of in-game changes. You know, we, we talked about that just you, you, don't, you don't have a chance at college basketball by going into a game with just one plan and not being able to change plans as you go. I don't care if it's an out-of-bounds play or, or an offensive action. You have to be able to make adjustments. We tried to switch, switch some screens. We tried to truck and trail on other screens. You have to make in-game adjustments. Um, coaching is not effective if you, if you can't execute it. And so we can come up with ideas and the players forget this time or overhelp the next time. And that's the biggest difference. There's just, there's no room for that error. You go play Stanford and Cal or go on the road for any of these games and 
you, you, you have breakdowns, mental breakdowns, and forgetting an assignment, how to play that, um, somebody gets wide open. Somebody has you know, too many. So just, just making those in-game adjustments. You know, the kids are pretty good when you can show them exactly what you're doing for a week time and you rehearse one way of doing it. But then you have to make a change to it. Now you've got to make that real adjustment on the court. I mean, not count towards the record books, but for these kids, just finally playing somebody else. Is it nice to get that W out well, of the way? It's also good for the coaches to coach against somebody else, you know, because uh, having officials there helps because they think uh, during practice assistant coaches are, are um, you know, blowing calls uh, in there, you know, blowing the whistle, and they think, oh, that call, I would have got this, that, and they realize you can play through a lot of stuff there. Uh, I, think, I think Marcel's got hit on a screen pretty hard, and he's kind of stopped, like, oh, I got hit. And then, well, okay, he didn't get called, and, and the guy ended up popping up for another three, or his shoe came off one time. It's like, well, don't worry about your shoe now. I mean, these are the in-game adjustments that you can't, you know, in, in practice, somebody would just, oh, my shoe came off, let me kind of grab my shoe. And like, no, games, there's, there's no stop. And, and I think that we, you know, that's why we have to have an exhibition game. Kind of like, hey guys, it, it goes on. Until there's a whistle, you got to make a play and, and stay with the play. Yeah, they, they shot 70% from three in the first half, but you guys came out in the second half and held them just to fit, like 54% overall. So what kind of adjustments were you able to make just kind of as a uh, hold into that? I, I think we did just an okay job in the second half. I, I mean, it's still thought we, we, we allowed us out to get two, two naked looks by just not communicating on a screen, a back screen, or an on-ball screen. Um, we, we obviously addressed that real seriously. We wanted to switch on some of the screens that were there. Um, I, I think they missed some shots. I think, I think our defense was really below average, um, and our rebounding, defensive rebounding, was very below average. And um, that's just going to be critical. We're just not going to go play a Pac-12 team on the road, on national Pac-12 television, and think that you're going to you know, win or pull that upset without having in-game adjustments, better defense, on the perimeter and better defensive rebounding. So offensively, we've spent twice as much time on our offense as we have our defense. And that kind of showed tonight a little bit that I thought our defensive breakdowns concentration just wasn't there. So guess what we're doing tomorrow? For more defensive execution. Uh, how has this team been coming together through the preseason and tonight's game? Work in, work in progress. They like each other. And sometimes liking each other can also be as much of a disadvantage of the team that's um, you know, ha has its bumps and bruises with it. When you really like your teammate, you're, you're kind of concerned about whether he thinks you're gunning it or not, or dry, shooting too much, or shooting back-to-back -back shots. So, tell guys, you know, you, you can have a best friend on a team, and you can love and respect your teammates, but when it's your time to shine, you got to attack the hoop, and then you got to share it. And, and, and that, that's kind of a hard thing to get over. They, they really have a great respect for one another. New guys have come in and blended really well in the summer. The old guys have have a, a, you know added Josh Martin to the mix, and we added a, a Carlos uh, Garosa, the, the international kid from Latvia, and and he he's kind of getting into the mix and stuff. And so they, they have a lot of respect for each other. But sometimes great great chemistry isn't always about respect. Sometimes it's about communication and saying you got to do your job. I'm switching on that one. You got to have a little. I really believe there's a little friction for growth. You know, I said every strong tree has had a couple branches pruned every now and then. The wind knocks something down and it gets stronger. And so I think a team sometimes has to go to some adversity. Um, you know, we like to win and learn. So tonight we won an eight-point game, and I think we learned a ton. The guys aren't celebrating the locker room. They're just like, okay, we got a lot of work. Yeah, what can you say about Josh Martin? First game back from a redshirt year, has a double-double. You know, it, it, it's funny you brought that up because uh, we, we as coaches take a little bit of Josh's double-double um, for granted. It was because he had a 20-20 at Pepperdine last year before his injury. He had 22 points and 21 rebounds or something like that. But I don't, I, I can't recall a player in 30 years that ever had 20 and 20. And so now when you have a double double, you're like, oh, big deal. That's Josh. He can get a double double. And, and took what he, to do that, he only had seven field goal attempts, but he got the free throw line 14 times and knocking down free throws at a pretty steady clip. So that that was huge. And I think that that's what he's got to be able to do is just. You know, if you can if you can say put it in the books, a double double, uh, that that's that's another level player right there. And what are your thoughts on uh, Marcellus Garrett coming off the bench and leading the team in scoring tonight? Well, boy, he, he, you can watch that game and you can see he has one great thing called passion. He has a ton of energy, passion, and confidence that he's gonna knock down a shot, make a play, go to the hoop, attack. 
Um, he's not a guy that you, you over coach. You got to let him. You got to kind of let him play and let his motor go a little bit. So we, we think it's pretty easy to adjust with him on offense. Defensive side is where he's got to make those adjustments because he over helped. He over he did a little too much on defense. We left guys open because of that. But boy, what a great. We're a great energizer, bunny rabbit, and I just love his energy, uh, his personality. Um, he's a great teammate. Um, great to have uh, a great local player here. Yeah, you mentioned the free throws. So you got 40 attempts, and you made 29 of them, so 72 percent free yeah. free throws. Like that they kind of help in the second half, kind of build build a lead and put the game away. Yeah, I mean, and something that that was probably the offensive side. I'm really pleased about is that we didn't settle for you know uh, a, a team. Uh, Tonight was 16 three-point attempts. Our idea was reverse the ball and attack, reverse the ball and crash the glass. Let's not try to settle for just uh, you know trying to outshoot them. Because tonight, if we if we settle for a shooting match, we lost the game. Tonight was let's let's make them have to defend us inside, uh, make them foul us, build up that foul total, and that was our offensive game plan in the second half. Really pounded that in that. And but the defensive side, you know, I think we, you know, if we if we execute the defensive game plan with the same efficiency we did the offensive game plan, maybe it's a 15 point victory. But I'll take eight right now for November second. Joe, you mentioned uh, the chemistry and how everybody likes each other, and you said sometimes you got to shake the tree a little bit or have guys who are willing to do that. I picture guys like I don't know Jamal Johnson or Amari or you know guys guys in the past who you've had who. Who are those guys on this team, or is that something you have to do sometimes? Well, unfortunately, right now it's the coaching staff. Right. Yeah, and, and we, we keep on telling uh, Don and Vic, who are, are by nature super likable guys and super, they're both soft spoken. Um, Josh is getting there. Josh, Josh had, uh, you know, he was a pretty good communicator tonight um, on the court, but it, it's something that's got to be developed. It's certainly, um, you have to have the confidence that that what you say is going to be accepted, and sometimes hard things have to be said. So we're, we think that's probably one of the, the major things that has to be developed. It's not just natural for anybody right now, so everybody's going to have to develop it. Just building off of this map, th this game and just moving forward, what are you expecting and what are you kind of working on to get prepared for that? Well, I expect they're going to do to us what we tried to do tonight. Uh, we were... Uh, we had some size and strength over over East Bay down low. Josh Martin, Hank, Carlos were physical guys. They have size and strength over us. You know, you look at uh, the first game that we have with, with Stanford and Reed Travis is one of the most <coughs> strongest. I mean, he's probably a, a top three or four power forward in the nation. If you look at power forwards, um, you know, he, he's – and so I, I imagine they're going to go right at us physically down low, get us in foul trouble. Um, gets the free throw line, so we we've got to be able to handle that, and then we got to turn around and kind of got to take a pay, play from East Bay and shoot the ball really well. You know, you're not you're not going to pull that upset without knocking down some big shots and some contested. So we look forward to this. I mean, it's a tremendous thing to have two national televised games start the year off with in the uh, Bay Area. We have a tremendous alumni support up there. Um, it, it, it's critical for recruiting. It, uh, it's critical for fundraising it's critical for our players um, and I think all Cal Poly supporters fans want to see want to see a play against the best teams uh, play against the Pac-12 teams play travel to the nation nationally and I, I think that's a, a fun thing um, you had uh, probably five or six guys that didn't get in oftentimes in a game like this you, you're able to clear the bench obviously it was a little uh, closer maybe than you wanted but um, tell me about how your health is right now in terms of the team well we played uh, I think we played 10 tonight Right. Um, probably about as uh, we, we, we would probably would have got the freshman point guard Isaiah James into the game as a point guard uh, he rolled an ankle last week and we'll see how he is the uh, opportunity to play um, wasn't able to practice yesterday so he was clearly out of out of the rotation uh, Trevor John is, uh, was out for two weeks with, with an ankle and also um, had popped his hand and so he's, he's been kind of uh, up on the shelf trying to get back into a rotation. Um, Carlos so just had only practice limited with a concussion protocol. He was out for a week. So uh, it was nice to get those 10 in. Uh, um, you know, we got, we got 17. We got, big thing I look for is, is if we can get the guys that are coming in off bench, getting them to double figure minutes to spread those minutes out a little bit um, during the preseason. I really try to play 10 during the preseason. Uh, I don't like to cut the rotation down too much too early because you just have to have guys that have, have confidence in getting in there, getting some time, and develop them. As you get closer to conference play, we might see some games with just eight, nine guys. 
Um, but right now we'll, we'll try to force the issue and get guys in there um, somewhere around 10 a night. Yeah, Donovan played 37 minutes tonight. I mean, obviously they've been conditioned pretty well in practice in the preseason, so just emphasizing that as well, just kind of playing the right guys. Yeah, that, that would have been uh, – Donovan would have been at 32 tonight if we had Isaiah. Probably a couple little spots there I would have put the freshman in there. Um, but we we're, were in a position, they said, you know, I, I look at Don, and I go, how are you doing? He goes, I'm fine. <laughs> and uh, meaning he, he could play 40 minutes on a, on a night like that tonight where he's uh, he's in great shape and, you know, he's not carrying a lot of extra weight around with him so he can run forever, you know, so. Anything else for Coach Calera, guys? All right, thanks.